Hi everyone, I'm Xinda from Shanghai Jiao University. I'm glad to introduce our work on a systematic study on how to properly leverage a VM with RDMA. This is a joint work with my colleague Xia Ting and my advisors Long, Haibo, and Bingyu. Remote persistent memory is the key building block in modern data center systems, including distributed file system and distributed database. Nowadays, people are seek to building more efficient remote persistent memory with the help of emergency hardware technologies, namely RDMA and NVM. RDMA is an advanced network feature that has high bandwidth and low latency. Besides interfaces compatible to traditional networking primitives, which is known as two-sided RDMA, RDMA also provides a new hardware primitive, one-sided primitive. With this, with this primitive, the NIC can directly read-write server memory by passing server CPU. NVM is a storage class memory which has high performance and a better addressability. This means that it can be accessed as DRAM. Recently, Intel has finally released the first production NVM 3D exploit. So nowadays, we are able to use NVM uh, as an efficient persistent storage. Since NVM can be accessed as DRAM, RDMA can directly access NVM. So systems are able to achieve the best of both worlds by using them to build remote persistent memory. For example, we can use them to implement logging in a distributed database. However, our initial experiment revealed that RDMA suffer from bad performance when simply treating NVM as DRAM. Why RDMA has poor performance when accessing NVM as DRAM? First, so NVM provides the same interfaces as DRAM. It has different performance features. Worse even, existing emulators cannot faithfully emulate most of the performance features of NVM. Second, there are many hardware components, components involved in the interaction between RDMA and NVM. Each of them may cause performance degradation. So there have been valuable studies for RDMA and NVM, which we can use to build efficient systems. Yet they are insufficient. For example, Young's study focuses on how CPU can best utilize NVM, and they don't consider RDMA. Kaila's study studied the challenges when using RDMA to access NVM, and their focuses are on the impact of processor cache. Intel provides white papers for developers to correctly program RDMA with NVM, yet they don't focus on performance features of production NVM. In our work, we provide a systematic and a comprehensive study on how to best leverage NVM with RDMA. We collect and study various related operations from different sources and empirically analyze their impacts to RDMA and NVM systems. We also propose new optimizations. The study summarizes nine optimization hints. Based on our summarized hints, we optimize two existing RDMA NVM systems, one distributed database and one distributed file system. Both systems are designed when no production NVM is available, and neither of them achieve good performance on it. Our optimized systems can achieve up to two times better performance. The core of our study is nine optimization hints, and the focuses of these hints are on remote persistent write. As we can see, reading NVM with RDMA has close performance to DRAM because NVM has asymmetric rewrite performance features. On the other hand, writes are not, and we know that there are room for improvements because we can see in the figure in this slide, uh, the performance of, of it is, is still far from the hardware limit of RDMA or NVM. So for, for the nine optimization hints, we characterize them into three cat categories. The first is configuration-relative optimizations. The second is access pattern-related hints. And the third is RDMA-aware hints. 
As we can see, after applying all these optimizations, can improve RDMA write NVM's performance and achieve close to hardware limit. So we will start with the configuration optimization hints. The configuration optimizations are from existing studies. Among them, one particularly important one is X3, which is discovered in a prior study. It is, a, it is further a unique configuration features for RDMA and AVM. In short, uh, DDIO configured the endpoint of RDMA write. With DDIO enabled, RDMA directly writes to the processor cache. Otherwise, RDMA writes to the NVM. Since the data in the processor cache is flushed to NVM in a random way, and NVM has poor random write performance compared to the sequential write, one-sided RDMA NVM write cannot saturate RDMA's NVM peak bandwidth with DDIO enabled. So when applications want to saturate NVM bandwidth with one-sided RDMA, they should configure DDIO to be disabled. Next, we examine access pattern-related optimizations. Among them, H4 and H5 are from an existing CPU-specific NVM study. Besides, we also propose three new optimizations, H6 to H8. All three of them aim to saturate NVM's processing rate for small messages, since small messages cannot saturate the bandwidth. So due to time limits, we'll focus on H6. So the key to saturate the NVM processing rate is to avoid sending read modified write to NVM because NVM read requests will complete the processing power of write requests. For one-sided RDMA, it issues read modified write with PCIe partial write, which means that the payload does not fit into 64-byte granularity. Thus, Avoiding PCI partial write allows one-sided RDMA write to achieve close to NVM peak processing rate. So an RDMA NVM system should access small payloads in 64 byte granularity. Finally, we discuss how to use existing RDMA aware optimizations to op optimize common use cases in RDMA NVM systems. Currently, since the RDMA hardware is not designed for NVM, one-sided RDMA requires two network round trips to finish a persistent write. However, by leveraging the hardware properties and the broadly explored RDMA aware optimizations in the literature, we can use one round trip time to finish one persistent write optimization uh, to, to finish one persistent write operation without any hardware extension. Specifically, we can apply the following known optimizations, double batching and out, outstanding requests. The reader can refer to these sources if you have interests. Finally, we we'll present how to use the optimization hints to optimize existing RDMA NVM systems. In, the, in this talk, we will focus on the uh, distributed database. Uh, DRTM Plus H is a distributed database designed for RDMA and NVM. It has not optimized for uh, production NVM because uh, when it's designed, there is no real NVM available. We applied the following nine optimizations to it according to the nine optimizations summarized in our study. For example, to avoid closed socket access, we use a partition store approach in it. So the results show that all these optimizations can effectively improve its performance on the projectional NVM. We also use a factor analysis to analyze the impact of different optimizations. <clears throat> we can see that not all optimizations are beneficial. For example, after applying H3, which improves RDMA NVM bandwidth utilizations, may decrease the overall performance because it has poor cache locality for the two-sided RDMA. And in this small bank workload, uh, the performance is not bottlenecked by the NVM bandwidth. So this suggests that the developers need to empirically analyze the trade-offs of different organizations. 
In summary, uh, this paper summarizes nine optimization hints for system developers to better leverage RDMA with MVM. Based on our study, we also provide several suggestions to future hardware designers. For example, existing RDMA NVM hardware extensions focuses on adding more functions to, to the hardware. For example, providing an RDMA primitive for, for one round trip persistent write. We believe that hardware designers should also consider primitives for better performance. For example, CPU has a non-temporary store instruction to bypass the processor cache. Since the bypassing the process cache is also important for RDMA, RDMA can provide a similar primitive uh, to bypass the configuration of DDIO. Since we have shown that currently uh, uh, tuning the DDIO configuration may have a false performance impact to other workloads. So, in, so giving a non-temporary RDMA website write uh, may gr uh, greatly improve the system developer's flexibility when using RDMA and MVM with other applications. In conclusion, designing high-performance RDMA NVM system requires a clear understanding of how RDMA access NVM. This paper gives, gives a systematic study to summarize how to achieve them. We believe that there are also room for improvements for systems that are especially not designed for the production of NVM. Thanks for your listening.